Hello everyone, Dean Bowles here, Swim Ontario, and I'm here with Melinda Harrison, where I think this is our fourth uh, episode of our, our series that we're delivering. And, uh, you know, this, uh, this Groundhog Day that you described earlier uh, to me is just continuing, but I think there are some, uh, you know, we're learning more uh, about our, about our uh, situation, conditions here in, in, in Ontario, Canada, and around the world. And uh, if all things uh, go as planned and people do what they're supposed to do, we will start to see the light and be able to come out of this, uh, this uh, situation. Yeah, I'm getting more and more positive about it. So happy to be here. It's Melinda Harrison, for those who haven't met me, and look forward to presenting our concept today on strengths. Okay, I'm looking forward to this. I, I really like the title you've used is learning and leaning into your strengths. I, yes. I, I really like those, those action words that you've used because I think we sometimes we've heard other platforms and uh, you know, it's maybe on the surface. This one I think goes a little bit deeper and I think that's what, this is a perfect time to be doing that little bit deep diving into uh, you know, what's going to make us that much better uh, yeah. when we go forward. Great. Okay. Let me share my screen here. Yeah. So why did I put learning and leaning into your strengths? Um, first of all, learning, because I think it's important to really be able to articulate what your strengths are and leaning into them is using them to your best advantage. Perfect. So this first slide is really about a visual to look at, well, all these different size pencil crayons and you know, they have different sharp points and, you know, the visual really is about, well, what, you know, what are your strengths relative mm -hmm. to the people around you? Yeah. So for swimmers in the pool, you might have one athlete who keeps the group laughing between mm -hmm. sets. Yeah. Um, and you might have another athlete that, you know, their strength is intensity. And so they keep the group trying to ramp up the intensity and then you might have a coach on the deck that is um that strength is you know listening and really understanding what the athlete is going through and being able to respond and then you might have another coach on the deck that pushes you and so mm -hmm. really understanding what the strengths are for yourself for your team and for those that surround you yes it's funny when you bring these things out, it gets me thinking back years and years, uh, the days I swam and the coaches I had and throughout the coaching career I've had and things like that. It's, it's actually quite, it's a quite an interesting uh, uh, process and exercise on finding myself as, it, as we go through these talks. Yeah, yeah, no, I, and I can easily think back to some of those coaches I had and some of them had some really great strengths. <laughs> some of them, there were some dark sides. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And yeah. that, that's, uh, so, that's the telltale of the environment that we're in today, that those dark sides are not really, are not, definitely not appropriate. So, right. uh, you yeah. know, part of this reflection piece, and I call it a reflection piece, uh, what, what we're doing, uh, but exercises to uh, move forward. Um, I, I find this has a, a bit of a, a message to me is that you know it's like who has your back right, right. Is, you, you, you know you call it who supports you and things like that but who has your back and that's that's the nice thing about being part of a team uh being part of a sport uh, i think that's the whole you find out especially in tough times you find out who really does have your back right and you know that secure base allows our athletes to take risk mm -hmm. And there's a lot of research around this that we can talk about at another time, but being a secure base for an athlete when they're, they've got that niggling bit of fear and you say, I've got your back, yeah. you can do this. Yeah. And that allows them to take the chance to do it. They might not succeed, mm -hmm. but it really is understanding who that person or who that group of people are and in a, on a team like a swim team you know, they're the athletes that surround you. Mm -hmm. It's when you go into the locker room and you, you know, you're exhausted and you feel like crying because, you know, it was just such a difficult workout and somebody comes up to you and says, yeah, but you did it. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the person that's supporting you in that moment. And yeah. that's probably one of their strengths. Yeah. Yeah. Being so a good team. Let's yeah. just flip to this and I'll okay. see if I can move this over a little bit because I think this is a really important um, stat for coaches and, and swim organizations. Mm -hmm. And this is from the Gallup organization who um, does a lot of research on employee engagement. And, you know, the first stat is 63% of employees are not engaged mm -hmm. and 24% are actively not engaged or actively disengaged, as they mm -hmm. say, indicating mm -hmm. they aren't unhappy and unproductive at work and liable to spread negativity to coworkers. Disengaged workers have 37% higher absenteeism, 49% more accidents, and 60% more errors and defects. Mm -hmm. So in organizations with low employee engagement scores, they experience 18% uh, lower productivity, 16% lower profitability, and 37% lower job growth, and 65% lower share price over time so obviously we're looking at corporate organizations but mm -hmm. this is very applicable to our swim clubs and our coaches and our oversight organizations like swimming canada and swim ontario and so what what is it that causes employees to to get more engaged and i think you know the next slide actually i'm going to flip to this one um, the next slide is there's this enormous body of academic research that shows the impact of using your strengths at work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Using your strengths at work have been found to, and you can read these, improve performance, job satisfaction, increase happiness and decrease depression, increase well-being and positive emotions and your self-esteem, self increase your passion for work, and more positive work experiences and this is just a this is just like a, a a quick example of some of the research this is a growing um body of work that that really was started again i talked about marty seligman last week and his book flourish it really started with him and a few groundbreaking breaking psychologists that decided that they wanted to look at the positive side and what the positive side of life can can um, help you to flourish in in your particular organization and job and this might be the time that we'll see that maybe as we come come out of this and move forward i mean you know we hear uh i've heard uh, uh you know uh, armed forces people generals uh, even politicians talk about when there's a crisis there's always an opportunity uh, to come out of the crisis. And so I think this is where organizations, teams uh, will look a bit, a little bit deeper into it. I, I do think they'll take time. They'll have to, because I think things are going to be different and they're going to have to build on their, what they've learned and right. make better. Right. So then I'm going to flip back at, to this slide here and it talks about, you know, what is it that contributes to you being at your best, to you being engaged in the organization? And it's the environment you work in. It's the people you work with. It's the successes you have. We can't underestimate when you have success, you feel good about what you're doing. It's the feedback you get. It's the tasks you perform on a daily basis. And it's using your strengths. And so really understanding how your strengths contribute to you at your best. And even when you're doing a task that is more of a to-do list task than something that you really want to do if you use your strengths you're going to feel better at it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so articulating your strengths well how do you know what your strengths are i thought about when i was thinking about this this morning I pulled out my list here you probably can't <laughs> see it because it's it's from nine or 10 years ago. And I okay. carry this in my wallet all the time. Yeah. It's squishy. It's got, you know, but I know what my strengths are. Um, so one example is to create a list and yeah. you know, there's all sorts of ways to create a list, but just start writing down when you yeah. notice yourself doing something, you think, well, what strength was it that helped me 
to get that done, to, to you know, go back to this list, to, to uh, perform that task, to have success. What was it that helped me do that? So that's mm -hmm. one way to do it. Another way is to ask a friend. So I was thinking about my friend Dean this morning and thinking, well, what would his strengths be? If he asked me, you know, Melinda, what do you think my strengths are? And I've known you for a very long mm -hmm. time, um, probably 1978, we first met, 78, yep. 79. Yep. Um, so, you know, to me, one of your great strengths is your reliability and calm, calmness to get a message across. Mm. I think, you know, if I'm feeling anxiety about something and I need to reach out to someone, I would reach out to have a discussion with you because you'd bring me down from my hyper state. Well, something of the similar note, I would say that you're the one that would bring me out of my box and start looking around the around the edges and and uh, and beyond. Uh, that would be what I would call one of your strengths, uh, or that I would draw on. So, yes. It, yeah. Go ahead. And so anyway, I mean, you can talk. <laughs> it's great because you know here, here I have. I'm looking at my list here, and you haven't seen this list, and no. you know it's mine. I keep it pretty close to me, but you know I look for opportunities for growth. Personal growth mm -hmm. is a big yeah. strength of mine and sharing that and connecting with people all around growth is a huge strength of mine. Yep. So the idea is that you can find those secure base people that are in your life that know you really well, that are willing to have a conversation around this and ask them, ask them what they think your strengths are. Yeah, no, I think this is, this is exactly, what needs to be done uh, more often. I think it's something that uh, we do a lot of testing in a sense when it comes to the physical side of things, but we don't do enough to maybe, you know, an internal look at what ours are strengths. And this, that, that, that uh, little action you do by keeping your strengths close to you, I think that can go a long, long way. I just think in the swimming, uh, you know, you can have, you know, I know that swimmers in their mesh bags, they have their, their charts of their speed charts and things like that. Why wouldn't you want to have your strength chart there? You know, like I, your, your, your internal strength chart, not the physical strength, but your internal emotional strength chart, because that's what that can, that can be so helpful. It's, I mean, that's such a great idea, Dean. I just had goosebumps because that's exactly the point here is that when you're struggling, that's the time to pull out your strengths. Yeah. Because you know deep down inside, you may not like it in the struggle. You might, oh, I got to pull out those dumb strengths. <laughs> but, you know, they're not dumb. They're there to help you get out of that struggle. Yeah. And so, you know, I think they should be written down. I think that's a brilliant idea. Mm. So the third one is to do an assessment. And there's all sorts of assessments online. In fact, on the on Canadian Swim Coaches and teachers association work that I'm doing a little bit for, I gave them an example of an assessment. Um, that is more a self-assessment, but I've also um, put in for the takeaway homework, the VIA assessment. And I use this all the time in, in corporations. It's called values in action. So mm -hmm. they look at strengths as what, what are your values that you're actioning? And it's a wonderful, wonderful assessment and will certainly um, bring some awareness out for individuals. That's great. That's super. And it's free. <laughs> That's even better. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's important to look at strengths and team, which is what we've been talking about and really understanding, you know, who are your teams? Mm -hmm. What does each person add? And what are the shadow sides of the team's strengths? So in teams, we have to be careful that we don't surround ourselves with all like-minded individuals. And this is one of the issues that athletes face after, after they're done their sport, because they've been surrounded by like-minded individuals from a very, very young age. And then all of a sudden they get out into the working world and people aren't working as hard or they're a little, they're slacking off or they just don't have goals or their version of performance is different from your version. And you're thinking, God, these people, they're not like me. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I mean, at the NCAA level, they're called NARCs, non-athletic regular people. And, 
I've not it's heard that one, so there we go. It's an acronym they use down yeah. there. And all of a sudden you find yourself a NARC. And it's a very uncomfortable thing because, you know, your whole mindset has been about development and win and mm -hmm. figuring out how you can be the best you can. And then you might get in an environment that that, that isn't what that culture of that organization is. And so it can, it can really throw you. So in our current teams, you know, you need that person that's going to be the hard ass, excuse the language, mm -hmm. but you need the person that's going to be the empathetic one. That's an important thing for coaches to do to think, well, what are my strengths on my team? And, you know, what does each person add? And of course, what's the shadow side? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I think this is a very important, we, we talked about this in preparation. We talked about, uh, we'll call it team coaching. When we talk about coaching and, and drawing on each other's strengths within your team environment, at least a coaching environment, uh, and we talked a little bit about some of the university, uh, you know, the NC2A programs and one that comes to mind is the uh, University of Michigan. Uh, you know something about yep. you, you were a graduate there, but in recent times with Mike Bottom, you know, they have just a, uh, you know, a whole team of coaches on the deck and they all have a role to play and they all have their strengths and some are obviously more key than others. But I think from an athlete's point of view, they have the, they have the benefit to be able to draw close to the ones that they uh, feel, you know, where there's that, we'll call it an attachment, but where they feel that they can be, be themselves. And uh, that's, I think that's something that I think we need to, even in our club situation, figure out how do we create a team coaching piece? And it's around these uh, areas of identifying each, each one's strengths and complement them. Right. And also, I mean, like a simple exercise for coaches is to do is to put out a Venn diagram mm -hmm. and or, you know, if there's five coaches, put five circles out with each person's name on it and then have each person fill in their strengths. Some of them will overlap. Mm -hmm. But when you get in situations where an athlete needs a certain strength, the head coach can call on that other coach and say, hey, I really want you to use this. And what does that do to the individual that the head coach is asking for help for? Well, it makes them feel like they're contributing. It makes them feel relevant, that they're a, a very powerful person in the cog of this development of this athlete. And if you don't have those written out, you might know them in your mind, but if you don't have them written out, you're not going to use them. So, right. you know, I would, I would, and I would start doing that for athletes too. I would take yep. your you know, a certain group of athletes that you're, you know, you're really trying to get to perform and put them in that diagram, put them in circles mm -hmm. and get to know what their strengths are um, because you can develop strengths. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Good. So hang on, I'm just going to move this over here. Strengths and teams. <laughs> so I love this. This made me laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm searching for, um, some stock on yep. ice. this one made me laugh because it really does demonstrate that somebody who has a very dominant strengths can scare the crap out of somebody that might not and yep. yet that person that might not uh is so valuable and if you squish them you're not going to get the best out of them so it's important to remember that you know your strengths are really great but they can be overused mm -hmm. and when they're overused. You're going to piss somebody else off and that could create disengagement. It could create uh, frustration. It could create a whole bunch of things that, that are negative outcomes, not only for the relationship with you and the other coach, but also the relationship and the dynamics that are going on within, within the athletes and um, the club organization. Right. So it's important to know that, um, you know, what are, the, what are your strengths and then what are the dark sides or the shadow sides of those strengths? Mm -hmm. And the dark sides can happen in an automatic way. You know, I talk about efficiency as one of my strengths. It is. And, you know, I grew up in a life of had to get things done, had to get school done, had to get to practice. You know, that just has carried over if three kids. I have to do this. I, you know, multitasking and mm -hmm. the dark side of that strength shows up 
often and my husband goes he knows it and he says okay that's your you're heading to the dark side melinda back off a little bit and so you know he knows to call me out of it and i just start to laugh now but mm -hmm. you know if you'd asked me that 10 years ago i would have had no idea that it was a dark side of, of this really great strength isn't that something through your whole journey of where you are today it was a self-learning course in a sense obviously and it that's is where, totally that's where we all are we all have to admit that and we all have to be open to it and figure out what is going to be our you know our journey our path uh you know from you know moving forward yeah that's great so go back to that exercise that i said for our coaches to you know put their other the head coach and all the coaches you know in that little uh circle talk about in your coaches meeting well what are the dark sides of these strengths and why does mm -hmm. that trigger somebody else you know if, if somebody has got a you know a very forceful personality um it would it might trigger somebody because they don't feel like they can speak up in an environment yes and so forceful can be very positive it's not a negative it just means that you have to understand when that is appropriate and when it goes more to a shadow or dark side right So again, thinking about how do you promote your strengths in your team? And you know, it really is this idea of sharing your strengths and using those strengths in your one-on-ones, I noticed. So instead of just saying, good job, good job mm -hmm. there, say, boy, I noticed how you use that strength of empathy to, to, to calm the group down really call it out to your, um, to your team, to the members of your team. You know, if I look at mine, authenticity, that's a, that's a great strength of mine. What you see is what you get. And I'm not afraid to show emotion and I'm not afraid to talk about things that, you know, that maybe other people won't talk about. Um, so, when somebody says to me, boy, you really, you really connected with me because you were real, Melinda. You had a real conversation. To me, that is the greatest compliment I could get. Mm -hmm. Because it's, somebody is acknowledging that I'm showing up the way that I think is the, my best self. Interesting. You know, when, when you're I'm listening to you, and it's, you know, I think when you mentioned about good job i think we overuse that term a lot and it loses its meaning for some it might be uh you know uh, uh, a good moment for them but after a while and i've had some athletes uh, over my time tell me you always say that but really was it and are you just saying it and and uh i like the idea where you actually dig a little bit deeper and actually bring out what was it so then it has a chance to resonate and yeah. when something resonates, then it's going to have a better development, uh, developmental uh, uh, process. Right. So, you know, for an athlete, you know, you really, if, if one of their strengths is, you know, pushing the limits, like really digging in and pushing as hard as they can, you don't just say, good job. You turn around and say to them, wow, I really noticed you gave it your all there. You know, I know that was hard. But because your strength is, is, you know, trying to push that limit as far out as you can, that's really going to benefit you later on. It's mm -hmm. a completely different way to talk to an athlete. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So, you know, the other ways are, um, so that's what random strength spotting is. The other ways are seek out projects that leverage your strength. Someone like Kathy Party, you know. Um, who, you know, is a fantastic coach and, you know, her strengths of empathy and listening are, are so phenomenal. So if you look at someone like her, she, she's able to use those strengths in certain situations. If she seeks out projects, like the one she's doing right now that I saw on Instagram, where she's helping to um, sew mass, mass, medical mass out of old lycra bathing suits, like that is a, you know, she is using that strength. She's seeking out that project. I thought that was so wonderful last night mm -hmm. to see that on Instagram. <laughs> um, and encourage your colleagues to do the same. And then redesign your tasks. You know, we always go on how we think 
we should do it because that's how we've done it. Instead, think, well, how could I do this task differently using the strengths that I've identified? And then um, leverage those, leverage them to other people, help other people define theirs and help other people see yours. This is great. I really like your, your, your illustration there. That's, that's, that's exactly what we're, we're talking about. Wow. So this is, I'm just going to pull this over. So I'm going to give this to um, Lindsay mm -hmm. uh, so that you can download. So this is the values and action character strengths that I was talking about. There's this wonderful YouTube that, that was done. It was released in 2016, I think. Um, I was at a conference in Dallas on positive psychology and uh, they released this film and now it's on YouTube. It just, it's such an energy builder and it really does get at what the values and action character strengths are um, and the science that has gone behind it. And then below that is the link to take the free test. So it's, um, it's takes about 15 minutes mm -hmm. and you'll get what they call a, a list of all 24 strengths of which the top five or six would be called your signature strengths. And then you have your middle strengths and your lower strengths. And I really want people to understand that it's important when you take this and you get your report back that you don't, it's not that your, your lower strengths are things that, that, you can't use, you can dial those up if you need to, but they're more situational and you have to think about them. Whereas your top five signature strengths are just things that are, are part of who you are. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful assessment. I use it all the time. If somebody wants a more in-depth assessment, they can come to me. I have the, I, you know, I have those assessments. Um, they're, you know, not that expensive, but I do have to pay for them. So I'd have to charge, mm -hmm. them. but I certainly would be willing to do a debrief on them and really talk about why um, they, it, you know, how it relates to the individual. Mm -hmm. No, this is, uh, well, I, I can't wait to uh, take the time to uh, go through these two links and, and uh, learn. I'm always, I'm always one trying to learn something uh, because sometimes I don't think I know that much, but <laughs> not necessarily true, but I think it's always about trying to either reinforce or see what the, you know, what the, trying to get outside that box. Yeah. Uh, but that was one thing I learned when I, while away in, in Europe, uh, when I was away uh, in Denmark, I found that the Nordic way or the Scandinavian way was a lot around value based uh, leadership and a lot around the development of your culture, right. the culture in itself. And I think this, this leads, this just resonates with me. Uh, the things that uh, we need to take time to uh, investigate, to understand, and then trying to, uh, you know, incorporate in, in how we should move forward on things and how we should, uh, it's behaviors, it's uh, yeah. management of, of ourselves and of others. So I think this has been great, uh, Melinda. Fantastic. Excellent. Super. And so why don't next week, um, I have my ideas. I know what they are, but why don't you take the test and, and share yeah. your top five? I will. I and will. Before this is, we start this, into our project for next week. That, that'll be great. Um, well, thank you very much, Melinda. You're and uh, just, uh, you know, this has been so valuable. I know that you're working with other organizations. I know with the Canadian Swim Teachers uh, Coaches Association, uh, and uh, you have all kinds of other people knocking on your doors and you're doing things like that. So this is, this is quite wonderful to get some of your time for us and our, our, our swimming community. And one last thing is just to, a reminder for people as we move into this holiday weekend to continue to do uh, the things we're supposed to be doing, uh, yeah. abiding by the rules, the laws, and uh, let's work towards to see that light get a bit brighter and uh, see if we can return to play uh, in, in, a, in a timely manner. Uh, Melinda, what do you, what, what kind of things are you going to do this coming weekend? Well, probably the same <laughs> thing I've been doing for the last three weekends <laughs> and three weeks. So, you know, one of the things that we're really trying to do is get up and work out first thing in the morning. So okay. I did my, I did an hour of very intense weight, um, you know, fast weights this morning. 
tomorrow I'll probably do a run. Um, so that sets my day off. I know when I get that done that I feel really good about myself. And sometimes I struggle to get out the door or get down to the basement. But when I do it, I feel great. So mm -hmm. that is, you know, both my husband, Jim, and I have decided we're just going to push ourselves to get down and get that workout down, done. Okay. You know, just a quick tip on um, what you just said, though. I was working, you know, with a client this week, um, a young athlete. And, you know, this individual said to me that, you know, he was feeling some struggles. Um, motivating himself. And he said, that we're kind of, you know, in the middle of this now. And so we're in that messy middle. And, you know, so I said, well, what can I do to help? And we talked about that. And I was so proud of him for reaching out for help, because normally this individual um, likes to figure it out himself, because he's smart, and he's, you know, he's dedicated and stuff like that. So you know, if, if you are an athlete out there struggling a little bit, make sure you reach out to your coach for help. They'll be there for you. Great advice. I think that is so key. And again, thank you very much, Melinda. We look forward to talking uh, next week. And, uh, you know, take time for yourselves and all the people that are important to you. And I will do the same. And hopefully everybody out there will follow through as well. That's great. Look forward to it. Okay. Bye.